Hi guys, Brand here, and welcome to a lovely video today, because today we're going to be talking about the Castlevania PTB and the release of Dracula. I have not enjoyed a killer this much since the Xenomorph came out, and I think it's funny because going into this PTB, I was like, mm, you know, I like the, aesthetically, there's not a lot there to really draw me. I'm not like a huge Castlevania fan myself. So like unless like the power is really, really cool, it's not for me and everything's going to go along as usual. Uh, but uh, to my surprise and shock, uh, this power is really, really fun and really, really good. And I love it a lot. <laughs> uh, there are some uh, caveats to that, though, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and get started with all this, though. I, I mean, I might as well at this point. Like, I already started talking about Dracula himself, so might as well start with that as the, the, the main thing that we start off with today with talking about the game uh, <laughs> is the Dark Lord, good old Dracula himself, is super fun. So Dracula, the way he works is he's essentially three different like mini characters in one, uh, one being the vampire form, which is essentially kind of a xenomorph nemesis-esque kind of character where you're 115 and you have a hellfire spell that's really sluggish to pull out and feels really punishing to miss but it's very, very versatile in the way that it can go over, through, and around a lot of obstacles, which is really, really awesome. Of course, like I said, reminds me a lot of Nemesis and Xenomorph in the way that their attacks work. There's some really, really wild shots you can hit uh, having to do with this. I know, the, the power itself is just so creative and is so skill expressive that it's just like, I, I just found myself just endlessly queuing into Dracula for this and other reasons that we'll get into, uh, because I just wanted to hit more funny Hellfire shots, which is the same kind of thing that attracts me to playing Xenomorph, is I just kind of want to hit more funny tail attack shots so I can put that in a compilation and just, you know, vibe. So that's really, really great. That's really awesome. Uh, the bat form is probably my favorite form because it, it's just it's just really, really fun. This is like your your mostly your info and your map traversal tool here because you're really, really fast, you're undetectable, and you can just fly through vaults and over pallets like it's no like no problem at all. But the cool part and probably the coolest part of this is that you can teleport to any vault point and this does include down to pallets. Uh, there was an instance where I was playing on Ormond today and I had hooked somebody up in the upstairs hook in the room in like the bedrooms up there and I was on the outside near shack. This is Ormond 1. Uh, and <laughs> from the, the shack, uh, I was able to walk out a few meters target the window vault that's up there and fly right back up there and intercept the save that somebody was getting on somebody on the hook up there. I really went from outside shack two floors down and far away and we're just suddenly back contesting the hook right away. It was super awesome and super hilarious. Like I was, it was just, it was just like, it was really, really fun. It was really, really cool. One thing I forgot to mention, which uh, the memory was triggered from that little incident that I had there. Um, the Hellfire spell does hit multiple people. It's like uh, Pyramid Head's uh, rights of judgment where the, when the, the little you know row of flames go out it hits anybody who's in there so if somebody just you know decides to be a little bit of a goober and just hook on try to unhook in your face you can just wait it out like with pyramids m2 and just you know burn them to death <laughs> it's pretty cool it's pretty great uh the one form that's kind of like underwhelming and not so fun to use is the wolf form uh you can do some really fun and interesting flicks with this but even then like the pounce attack is like the hitbox feels really deceptive like you end up sliding off survivors a lot uh the main way i found to be able to use this consistently was kind of use it as like a surprise attack like uh i would just be in vampire form a bat form and then suddenly drop into the wolf form and get the pounce before they could really react um, but other than that, it was really hard to use this consistently, especially the uh, the tracking aspects of this are not as helpful because uh, the it says in the powers description that this this power is supposed to make you or this form specifically is supposed to make you quicker, but you're actually slower. And I don't know why some people were saying it was a bug, but I couldn't find anywhere behavior confirming that um, I think it's safe to say that if they say it, it's faster than the vampire form, but it's not. Um, it's, it, it, something's probably wrong there. Um, I am aware that the whole, like, mechanic is that, like, you follow the scent bubbles and they give you haste, but it, regardless of that, you still feel like you don't really catch up to, you barely catch up to survivors. Like, it feels like you barely catch up to survivors, like, at all. So that's, like, it doesn't feel good to play in this form. It feels very, like, the thing I was going to say overall about, um, Dracula is something that's, like, Kind of something to worry about something i would warn you about before picking up the character is that they kind of have that vecna issue where like on the ptb they're very like clunky and probably need some quality life changes like 
fixing whatever's up with the wolf form, making missing and throwing the hellfire spell not as sluggish to do. Just a little stuff like that. Just, you know, it needs a little bit more polish before it's ready. But regardless, I love this character and it's probably going to be very, very firmly in my secondary. Fit in there snugly with like Singularity and Deathslinger. Like, I love this character a lot and I did not expect to and it makes me really happy. The perks are not really something to really write home about here. Um, there's some fun ones that kind of serve as like good uh, auxiliary perks for other builds. Uh, Hex Wretched Fate is probably the most like used and probably helpful one out of all of these. Although there's one that's my favorite <laughs> that I like more than this. But um, Hex Wretched Fate is after one generator has been repaired, a dull totem rarely becomes a hex. So something like uh, Face of the Darkness where it spawns midway through or plaything. And the obsession now gets a 33% uh, repair speed penalty. And thankfully the obsession does see the aura within 12 meters of it. So essentially after the first gen completes, which is war worded extremely poorly here, it's, ex it's worded extremely poorly here. Um, <laughs> it's, it should say after the first generator has been repaired, a totem spawns. But the way it's phrased here with after one generator has been repaired makes it sound like it's going to happen more than once, but it doesn't. Um, a lot of people like when they first read the patch notes and read the perk, they were like, OK, you run this pentimento and it's super broken and obnoxious. Um, but they were under the assumption that 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 uh this continued after the first pop, but it does not. Uh, so just just keep that in mind. Still, still very very nice perk. It's it's free slow uh, slow down free a red bar for at least one of the survivors. Uh, you can synergize this with other perks like save the best for last to intentionally ignore the obsession uh, and try to synergize with that. But um, not as strong as people initially thought this one was, which is fine because it's still, you know, it still makes it to where one guy is having a really rough time. Um, and it's not like he's stuck with it because he can just go find the totem with the aura reading. So it's, it's fairly balanced, but not something that, you know, you can just run by itself for value uh, and, you know, change the course of a match. Human Greed was one that actually ended up being my favorite. This is the one where you can see unopened chests and survivor auras are revealed for three seconds when they're in eight meter range around these chests. I, I just found this neat. One of the things I I liked a lot about uh, Undying when that came out a long, long time ago was the aura reading that came with it, uh, the free info. Um, <laughs> so like, you know, even though I'm not a huge hex totem build person, uh, I was running like lethal Human Greed and I was having a pretty good time, uh, whether it was just getting info uh from someone uh for macro pressure or getting you know info mid chase for micro pressure that's just kind of like a funny one to have um and also it's kind of just like weird and interesting to just go over and shut a chest as the killer it's just like a unique fun new interaction <laughs> that was not previously possible i don't know this one was getting i was getting a kick out of using this one no no pun intended but that would have been a good one but yeah i was just i was just having a lot of fun with that so like i, I don't know I like this perk. And then Dominance. Dominance is the one that's also probably just uh, mostly relegated to being a companion perk. This is the first time a totem or chest is interacted with the survivor. It is blocked for eight seconds. So obviously, if you're doing a shaman build, you're doing a totem build, uh, having it uh, first time it's touched blocked for eight seconds helps. That helps a lot. Um, obviously, a synergy, synergy with Wretched Fate, which is a a teachable uh another perk that he does have that we already covered uh so if you're going for adept it's probably nice that these two at least bounce off each other for going for adept with this person when he uh releases um but other than that um it's kind of vaguely a pretty underwhelming perk i once again it's kind of like undying where you can't really run undying by itself but undying still nice this is still nice but you kind of can't run it by itself it kind of is just kind of like eh. I'll come back around to the survivor stuff, but we're going to talk about the killer updates and uh, this because I was so focused, <laughs> so focused on playing Dracula because I loved him so much. I had to go around and uh, watch a lot of different uh, uh, content and look up a lot of different takes that people had that were mains of these characters uh, because uh, just I, I wanted to keep playing Dracula, so I, I didn't. So I did my due diligence. I did research uh, both before and after uh, the stream. Uh, to try and figure out how people felt about these changes. Before I get too deep into this, I do want to say most of these changes are not so crazy and substantial that they're going to be dramatic changes. Like if you're one of those people that like hovers over killer buff changes, expecting somebody to go from like D tier to B tier, um, that's that's not the kind of changes you're seeing here. Most of these, I would say, put them like very, very firmly in whatever tier they're in and bump them up in the tier that they're in, but don't really change them in a severe way that like shifts them from like a C tier to an A tier or something crazy like that. And that's definitely the case with the doctor changes. The doctor changes are nice and very much welcomed uh, and make him feel better, but 
eh, it's it's just it's just a small little little tweak. It's not it's not enough to really you know pull him into a sudden like meta pick or anything like that. It just makes him better, just a little bit. And that's you know doctors. I feel like is one of those characters where because of his intense uh, anti chase and free info that he's one of those characters that kind of has to be balanced by the fact that because he has a lower skill floor and a lot of his stuff is not very um yeah it's, it, it, he just has a skill floor so a lot of the stuff he does is not very skill intensive so having somebody like that be really 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 good kind of doesn't make sense but he should feel good to play regardless so these are nice quality of life changes. Dredge is kind of the odd man out here. Uh, Dredge is the one that actually got some pretty substantial changes. Uh, looking at a lot of what a Dredge mains ha have said that it played the PTB, uh, they say that Dredge feels uh, not completely different, but it feels significantly better, significantly better. Um, I think my main issue is that Dredge still has the problem that he's mostly relegated to the mercy of whatever maps they go to because all of their power is based around locker spawns. Not all of it, because they have the remnant that they can go back and forth between. Um, but half of their kit, and the biggest part of their kit, is limited uh, by uh, locker spawns. And that's still a thing. That, is, that has not been adjusted anyway. <laughs> that is still the, the, the bedrock of this character. So he still struggles from the same thing he always has. But what these changes mostly do is make him at least way, way better. Uh, regardless of if lockers are uh, spread out or close together. So regardless of if he ends up on a map with a lot of lockers that are very well spread out or not a lot of lockers or lockers a lot in one place, he's going to be able to go burr, <laughs> to, to put it very crudely. Uh, he's going to be able to do more uh, in that form, even if he is at the mercy of bad map RNG, which is nice, which is nice that half of his kit is based around one thing that could be entirely entirely RNG and screw you over, but the other half is now way, way more consistent. Nemesis is the same way. Nemi, now you can get your next tier up without even having to uh, split between survivors. Previously, you had to split between survivors or get uh, full three hits on a survivor and then go find a zombie. Uh, now you can just get a full tier up to tier two just by chasing one survivor and making sure you hit all of your tail, or your tail, sorry, <laughs> wrong character, all of your tentacle whips on the one survivor. Uh, survivor also uh the hindered penalty that was added on fresh infects is really really good uh in addition to liquor tongue now adding an extra three seconds to that is pretty detrimental pretty detrimental formally uh fresh infecting somebody did nothing except really like set you up <laughs> uh for a potential value later uh but now it kind of serves as a way to slow down the survivor and kind of uh corner them into certain loops or areas because they are hindered they can't they quite quite literally can't get anywhere <laughs> so that that actually adds some functionality to a fresh infected that isn't just a kind of like a tax you have to pay to play the game you know so i liked to see that okay now we're gonna go up now we're gonna go back up to trevor belmont uh unfortunately there's no map with this which sucks that does make me sad that there is no map with this um but you do get dracula's castle that does spawn in the background of like original realms which is neat um but in terms of Trevor themselves, the perks that they come with, uh, there's a cool one that I think is going to be the, the nice one that comes with their perks is the uh, Eyes of Belmont, which is Lethal Pursuer for a Survivor. Uh, whenever Jen is completed, the aura of the killer is revealed to you for three seconds, but anytime the killer's aura is shown for a period of time, its duration is increased by two seconds. Now, I do want to say this. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the way that lethal works on the killer side of things, uh, it only extends the duration of things that actually have like a duration tied to them. So if it's like nurses calling where the aura only shows up when somebody is healing, lethal does not extend that. So you should watch out for that with this perk uh, for something that just reveals a killer during a, a specific thing. Um, then it's only going to do it during whatever action that it reveals them for. Whereas if it has a duration, like, you know, when the killer does this, they get revealed for two seconds. Now it will be four seconds because you're adding an extra two onto it. So. Yeah, that's how the behavior does things with that sort of like uh, mechanic. So just keep an eye out for that. Don't try to run it with something that does not have a duration. The next perk, Exaltation. Summoning the killer with the pallet uh, upgrades your health item to the next tier and replaces 25% of the item's charges. This one's going to be kind of like the one that I don't see a ton of people using. But it could be nice, especially for those uh, beamer savers who are going for, uh, especially champion of light gamers who like to go for the pallet stun and then do the little backup blind to give you the hindered. Now, while they do that, they're going to be getting uh, part of the charges on their flashlight back. 
uh, which honestly, now that I think about it, is actually a pretty good idea because one of the cool and good things about Champion Delight is that you can blind while backing up. And if you run that with like fixated, you get a lot of speed. And if you do not have to run batteries to extend your time on the flashlight because you're just running a perk that does it like mid chase, then you can replace a battery with like a lens add on and get even wide them from even further away. You know, there's kind of like a, there's some synergy there. There's some synergy there with Champion of Light that I didn't even think of to like right this moment. That's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. I see that. Yeah, this is one that you might want to worry about if you <laughs> see somebody and for some reason baiting stuns with something like uh, more dangerous, like a toolbox that will actually progress the game very aggressively in their favor. So be on the lookout for that. Last one's Moment of Glory. And this is the one that I always found kind of weird and don't really see the use out of. Uh, this perk activates after you open a rummage through two chests. When you become injured, you become broken. Automatically heal one, one health state after 60 seconds. So there's a lot that goes into this. So first you have to either open a rummage two chests, which is already a lot. That's a big time investment. And then it goes into when you become injured, you become broken for a full minute before you get healed back up. Um, the killer can see when people are broken on their on their little, uh, little hut over on the left. So if nobody's come off hook, I'm going to assume that broken's not from Delhi. If no, if you're not broken from the beginning, I'm not going to assume no mither. Uh, if the obsession didn't switch, I'm not going to assume for the people. So if you just randomly get broken in the middle of the match for no reason, and I see that over there, I'm probably going to be able to find you within a minute. <laughs> a, a minute's a long time. So I'm probably going to be able to find you and down you if I notice that. Um, obviously, that depends on what info perks I have, what map I'm on, what I was currently doing at the time. It's a little bit more situational than I'm making it out to be. But um, regardless, the, the the point being is that if I chose to be aware of this uh, and see that, I could actively <laughs> go punish you for using a perk that's supposed to be helping you heal back up. Um, so when there's a, a perk that essentially uh, uh, tattles on itself like this one does, um, I, especially for how much work you have to put in to do it. Why don't, why don't you just bring a syringe? <laughs> That's like the big elephant in the room with this. Why would you not just bring syringe in this situation, which does not require a perk slot and does the same thing for way less danger? I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe you can tell me. Similar to the killer changes, a lot of the survivor perk updates are kind of in a similar zone where like, it's not enough to really make them better or used frequently but it does make them nicer to use so they are more consistent but there's nothing really here that's like wow now this perk's good now nah, they're kind of all in the same place it's just that like a little bit more consistent because their effects were not strong enough to really justify having the, as long of a cooldown as they had you know what's funny i didn't even realize the, i didn't even like realize the extra 10 seconds on the hook timer today that being said people don't really play the same way in uh, PTBs as they do in normal games. Some people are tryharding because they just want to bully people in the public test builds, which is super cringe. Um, but then there's other people who just, like just bought the character, don't even wait to get four perk slots and run into a game with like one yellow perk. Um, so this, the jury's still kind of out on this one, but I didn't really actually notice the extra 10 seconds today. And that was something I was really worried about. Oh, also Midwitch. I wanted to harp on this before we, we left. Sorry to end on kind of a negative note. Midwitch is like, I wouldn't say ruined. That's a little bit it's kind of ruined. It, it's terrible. <laughs> so when when they said mid which we are going to be adding line of sight blockers to the map, I was thinking like, you know how they have upstairs where the lockers are kind of like leaning into the hallway and has that kind of like a uh, circular uh, curve to it. So it's like a little bit more claustrophobic in the hallway. I thought that's what we were talking about. What they did was far, far worse. It looks like it was done by like a, a child. That is baby's first map creator. They just plopped random assets in the middle of the hallways. And I am I wish I was exaggerating. I, I This isn't me like trying to do a funny and exaggerate for the sake of humor. I This is verbatim what they did. They actually just put random boxes, random gurneys, random pounds of flesh just in the middle of the hallways like a roadblock. Like I... I don't know how a character like Blight that actually has to pay attention to collision would get through this hallway. He just doesn't. He just bounces off everything because there's quite literally junk everywhere. Who signed off on this? Who thought this was a good idea? 
This is like the worst map change I have seen in a hot minute. It's embarrassing. Thank you for the extra uh, opening at the core of the map. <laughs> That's cool. Um, now you can get up on the map on all four corners if you count the library ramp that people seem to forget. Um, but just 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 throwing random boxes and gurneys and stuff just in the middle of the hallway. That's not line of sight blocking. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to tell you something really cool and neat. This map is Midwich Elementary School from hit video game franchise Silent Hill. You know what would be really good in Silent Hill to obscure visuals? that they perfected and were famous for on the PlayStation 1? Fog! You know what we say in Dead by Daylight? Welcome to the fog, into the fog. Why don't you use fog in the fog map? Novel concept. I guess we didn't think of that because it's 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 harder than just going, hmm, yeah, we already have this gurney asset. Why don't we just throw it into the middle of the hallway? Unbelievable. I, if I was working at Konami and I had any sort of like pull at Konami, like I was at a higher rank or something, and I saw that, I would be like, um, we're, we're caught behavior, behavior. What, what am I looking at? We gave you this license and you're doing, you're doing this, bro. Switch it back. <laughs> that is Midwich is my favorite map in the game. Greenville's my favorite original map, but Midwich is my favorite map in the game. And they butchered it. I hope this does not go live, but it probably will. That's great. Yeah, we have a little bit of a, of a mixed bag here. Dracula, super fun, super great. Probably need some quality life changes, but otherwise, super fun killer that I can't wait to secondary. Uh, the survivor perks and the killer perks in general. Perks in general in this are not really not something home to write home about. Something not really too great. Um, but hey, could be run with other perks to be super cool and awesome, at least. Uh, it, and then the killer tweaks are nice and welcome, especially the ones for Dredge. And the unfortunately, the map change to Midwitch. While I'll take the extra staircase, uh, they kind of ruin the map by just throwing junk everywhere. So please fix that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, friends. What did you think of the PTB? If you played it or watched a streamer play it, let me know down in the comments below. But uh, that's going to be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. But I do upload daily, so I'll see you tomorrow. But if I do not, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.